Almost no one has the time to investigate headlines like this one, seen by tens of millions of people. The AI models don't actually reason at all, they just memorize patterns. AGI is mostly hype, and even the underlying Apple paper quoted says it's an illusion of thinking. This was picked up in mainstream outlets like The Guardian, which quoted it as being a pretty devastating Apple paper. So what are people supposed to believe when half the headlines are about an imminent AI job apocalypse and the other half are about LLMs all being fake? Well, hopefully you'll find that I'm not trying to sell an narrative, I'll just say what I found having read the 30 page paper in full and the surrounding analyses. I'll also end with a recommendation on which model you should use and yes touch on the brand new O3 Pro from OpenAI. Although I would say that the $200 price per month to access that model is not for the unwashed masses like you guys. Some very quick context on why a post like this one gets tens of millions of views and coverage in the mainstream media and no it's not just because of the unnecessarily frantic breaking at the start. It's also because people people hear the claim is made by these CEOs of these AI lamps, like Sam Altman yesterday posting, humanity is close to building digital superintelligence. We're past the event horizon. The takeoff has started. While the definitions of those terms are deliberately vague, you can understand people paying attention. People can see for themselves how quickly large language models are improving, and they can read the headlines generated by the CEO of Anthropic saying there is a white collar bloodbath coming. It's almost every week now that we get headlines like this one in the New York Times, so it's no wonder people are paying attention. Now, some would say, Cynically, that Apple seemed to be producing more papers, quote, debunking AI than actually improving AI, but let's set that cynicism aside. The paper essentially claimed that large language models don't follow explicit algorithms and struggle with puzzles when there are sufficient degrees of complexity. Puzzle would like be Tower of Hanoi Challenge, where you've got to move a tower of disks from one place to another, but never place a larger disk atop a smaller one. They also tested the models on games like Checkers, where you've got to move the blue tokens all the way to the right and the red tokens to the left following the rules of checkers, and games like River Crossing, which might be more familiar to you as the fox and chicken challenge, where you've got to go to get up the side of the river without leaving the fox with the chicken. All of these games, of course, can be and were scaled up in complexity the more pieces you introduce. If models were a pre-programmed set of algorithms, like a calculator, then it shouldn't matter how many disks or checkers or blocks you have, performance should be 100% all the time. Shocker, the paper showed that they're not that, and performance dropped off noticeably the more complex the task got. But this has been known for years now about large language models. They're not traditional software, where the same input always leads to the same output. Nor, of course, are they fully randomized either, otherwise they couldn't pass a single danger mark. They are probabilistic neural networks, somewhere in between the two extremes, and the perfect example comes with multiplication. Again, I could have added breaking to the title of this video, but this has been known about for several years now. If you don't give models access to eight halls and ask them to perform a multiplication, then the moment the digits of the multiplication get too large, they start to fail dramatically. Not occasion getting it right, just never getting the sum right. If the number of digits is small enough, the models can reason their way to the correct answer. As you can see in the difference between O1 Mini from OpenAI and O3 Mini, performance is incrementally improving. In other words, it takes a bigger number of digits to flummox the latest models. But again, it must be emphasized that even with the very latest, the very best models you can access, if you don't give them tools, they will eventually reach a point where they just simply can't multiply two numbers. But this will always be the case because these models aren't designed to be fully predictable. They're designed to be generative. They're not designed to be software. They're designed to use software. They want to produce plausible outputs, which is why they'll hallucinate when you ask them questions they can't handle. Here, for example, I gave a calculation to Claude for Opus, the latest model from Anthropic, and Gemini 2.5 Pro, the latest model from Google DeepMind, but I didn't give them access to tools. They were never going to get this right, but rather than say, I don't know, they just hallucinated the answer in both cases. The funny thing was that these answers were plausible in that they ended in twos and began with 6-7, which the correct answer does. These models are, after all, very convincing BSers. But what the paper ignored is that these models can use tools and use them very effectively. Here's that same Claude for Opus, but this time allowed to use code. It got the answer right, and notice I didn't even say use code or use a tool. It knew to do so. So for me, what was surprising is that this Apple paper found it surprising that large reasoning models, they call them, can't perform exact computation. We know they can't. Now, several other people before me have pointed out another fatal weakness with the paper, which is they describe accuracy ultimately capping towards zero beyond a certain level of complexity. Because models are constrained with how many tokens, or parts of a word if you like, that they can output in one go. In the case of the Claude 
reward model from Anthropic that was tested. That token limit is 128,000 tokens, but some of the questions tested required more than that number of tokens. So even if the models were trained to be calculators, which they're not, they weren't given enough space to output the requisite number of tokens. For me then, it's to the credit of the models that they recognized their own output limits and then outputted what the paper calls shorter traces, basically giving up because they quote, knew they wouldn't have the space to output the required answer. Instead, the models would output things like, here is the algorithm you need to use or the tool you need to use which I think is reasonable. One quick detail that I think many people missed is the paper actually admits that it originally wanted to compare thinking versus non-thinking models, as does one's output long chains of thought versus those of bone on math benchmarks. Because the results didn't quite conform to the narrative they were expecting, and thinking models did indeed outperform non-thinking models with the same compute budget, they actually abandoned the math benchmark and then resorted to the puzzles. I guess what I'm saying is I slightly feel like the authors came through testing the thinking models with a preconceived notion about their lack of ability. Another learning moment for us all from the paper comes from their surprise, the Apple authors, that when they provide the algorithm in the prompt, the algorithm to solve these puzzles, the models still often fail. They're surprised by this and deem it noteworthy because they say surely finding the solution requires more computation than merely executing a given algorithm. But you guys have twigged this all by now. These are not calculators. They are not designed for executing algorithms because they are instead neural networks that are probabilistic even if there is a 99.9% .9 chance that they output the correct next step. When there's millions of steps involved, they will eventually make a mistake. Remember multiplication, where of course the language models know the quote algorithm to perform a multiply step. Indeed, the models are derived through matrix multiplication, but that does not mean that given enough steps required, they won't start making mistakes. The conclusion of the paper then toot things up for the headline writers because they say, we may be encountering fundamental barriers to generalizable reasoning. So if human performance is your yardstick, they are catching up fast and can BS like the best of us. But language models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Ford are not supercomputers. They're not the kind of AI that can, for example, predict the weather. Their real breakthroughs, as with human breakthroughs, come when they use tools in an environment that corrects their BS for them. That can lead to genuine scientific advance. And why it's surprised to hear some Ottman say it's going to be 2026 when we see the arrival of systems that can figure out novel insights. As far as I'm concerned, we have that now. Again, not LLMs on their own, but LLMs in combination with symbolic systems. So while language models can't yet solo superintelligence, which one should you use? Well, let me give you one cautionary word on benchmarks and a little bit of advice. In just the last 48 hours, we got O3 Pro from OpenAI at the $200 tier. I'm sure though that will eventually filter down to the $20 tier. And of course, the benchmark results were pretty impressive. On competition level mathematics, 93%. On really hard PhD level science questions, 84%. And competitive coding, you can see the ELO ranking here. My cautionary note though comes from the results you can see below for the O3 model, not O3 Pro, but the O3 model that OpenAI showcased on day 12 of Christmas in December 2024. As you can see, today's O3 Pro mostly underperforms that system accused back in December. So that's the cautionary note that you often have to look beyond the headline benchmark results to see how these models perform on your use case. The word of advice is that when you're looking at benchmarks, companies will often either not compare to other model providers at all or, as in the case of OpenAI these days, or like Anthropic with their Claude series of models, they will show you multiple benchmarks, but not be terribly clear about the multiple parallel attempts they took to get their record high scores, or about the serious usage limitations they have for their bigger model, or the massively elevated price for that model. Which brings me to my current recommendation if you just want to use a model for free, albeit with caps of course, and that will be Bugle's Gemini 2.5 Pro. Yes, I am slightly influenced by its top score on Simplebench and the fact you get a few uses of the VO video generator model. An honorary mention goes to DeepSeek R1, which is very cheap via the API, and at least comes with a technical report that we can all read through. I hope that helped give you some signal amongst the noise, but either way, check our channel for more future tech news. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss an update.